Hey everyone from New Hampshire. Shade Gardens coming on nicely and I thought it would be nice to do a video on shade plants. So as opposed to an overall view of the shade bed, which you can see in a prior video, I thought I would focus in on a bunch of different shade plants out there. So one of my favorites, I'm gonna get on right now, is Glaucidium palmatum. It's a Japanese wood poppy, I believe is the name of it. <clears throat> it's a fairly rare plant, can be hard to find. It's lavender is the main color. And then it can also um, be found in white, but that's really quite rare. I had a white one and uh, it did not come back, but that's okay. It's a beautiful plant. This will get a lot bigger. Moving along, we have some Ligularia. This is Britt Marie Crawford. Pretty good cedar. Likes to stay pretty, pretty moist. We have a bird bath up above and you can see the seating back by the deck. Bunch of seedlings, but it's nice. I can always share with friends. Of course, we have a bunch of hostas coming up. I have hostas throughout this bed so that once all the early shade plants finish up, the hostas will start coming in. It's another hosta tucked back in there. So it's still really early in New Hampshire for hostas. Tree peonies will be coming in soon. They're not doing so great in this bed anymore. I have a feeling it just might be a little too shady even though they supposedly want shade. <clears throat> I think it's too shady, but we'll see. This is Epimedium. Oh, it's one of my favorite spring plants. So many different varieties of Epimedium. I have about 30 in the garden. Let's take a look at those flowers. So pretty. I have them in yellow, orange, purple, pink, dark pink. Here's a Jack in the Pulpit. It was doing great, and then one year I never, it didn't come back. I thought I lost it for good. And then it came back the following year. There's another orange epimedium. With the epimedium, they like dry shade. So they're great for those places where a lot of things won't grow. Um, some of them really run along the garden. Like this one, this orange one is, um, it covers a lot of ground, whereas a lot of the other ones are just clump-like. There's Alcamilla mollus tucked in there. It's a great shade plant, beautiful. Of course, you'll see pictures of it when, um, you know, when you Google this plant, generally you'll see pictures of it when it's wet because the water beads on the leaves. It's a nice plant, it'll bloom a, a yellow, Kind of light airy flower and I had this in for years and it did not seed at all it's known to be a pretty prolific seeder and it did not seed and then all of a sudden after about five or six years of being in oh it was seeding so just beware that even if you don't see it seeding it will start here's a remaining of bloodroot I have double bloodroot as well as the singles and then I have pink bloodroot as well it's a nice early, early spring flower. Here's a Bleeding Heart Valentine, which is getting some pretty, pretty red flowers. I'm going to spin around on this. Oh, here's a, this is, Forgive my pronunciation, I believe it's Mukdinia. Mukdinia, Mukdinia. Nice shade plant. Uh, mine tends to get a little dry, so I have a feeling this wants more moisture, but this will start getting uh, some real burgundy around the edges of the leaves, which is really nice. I found hostas do well in pots. I can actually throw this under the deck at the end of the year and uh, it'll survive, which is nice. And then we have some trillium. Here's a nice trillium, a little purple flower. 
And I have a trillium here as well. It's a yellow one. There's a big clump of yellow over here. Love the foliage on this. I really like to mix and match foliage in the shade garden because really we're looking a lot for foliage. Once everything starts going out of bloom, little primrose in there. Here's a hosta called Fire Island, given to me by a good friend of mine. And I like it. Pair it up with the trillium. There's a lot of Lent and Rose in here as well. They're um, really on their way out at this point. Some Aquilegia over here. Some more Hosta. This is a Euphorbia. I'm not sure if Euphorbia is so much a shade plant, but it grows uh, pretty much in shade and sun for me. Coral bells just really like to seed all over the place, and sometimes I dig them out, sometimes I let them stay. There's some European ginger in here, which has really been taking over. I have big clumps of European ginger in various parts of the garden. And um, it really, here's a, I'm gonna walk kind of through a tree peony and uh, get to a big clump of European ginger that is growing amongst some coral bells and Lenten rose that has finished. Let's see what this looks like. Blood root. That was a single blood root. I find the single blood roots, the clumps get really big. Here's another epimedium down in here. You can see the foliage color is different. I can't say enough about epimedium in dry shade areas. There's another ligulary that came in from seed. It's seeded in right underneath a tree peony. That'll have a few buds on it, which will be nice. And there's an epimedium getting in there into the action as well. A still be is always nice in the shade garden. This is color flash. Quite a nice color on the foliage. It's another big Lenten rose. The flowers were much more, uh, sorry for my shadow, the flowers were, um, you could see much more of them before the foliage really started coming in. But now it's time for the foliage to take over. But this is, is really proving to be a wonderful clump. Beautiful Lenten rose. I have probably 25 varieties of Lenten rose around the garden. And then about 30 or 35 varieties of Epimedium. Here's another Lenten Rose. I think this one specifically might be what they're calling the stinking hellebore. This one really does stink. It's no lie. Another Euphorbia. Pulmonary is a nice little shade ground cover. This has seeded a lot, but it's nice because I can dig it up and share it with friends. This is a tree peony. It's one of the Itos. So it's, um, it'll bloom on new wood as opposed to the old wood. This is Jeffersonia. This is a pretty cool, pretty cool shade plant. I love the leaves on it. When it blooms in very early spring, it has tiny leaves and then uh, beautiful purple flowers. And the leaves are very purpley as well. And then it turns into this nice little, little clump. Oh, here's some bloody sorrel down here. I thought I was being so smart planting this in the shade garden. This garden gets backlit by sun. And I thought, oh, 
I'll be tricky because that'll look so pretty. Well, a little while ago I went through the entire shade garden and dug out as much as I could find because um, it was just seeding everywhere, which I should have known, but it does look nice backlit. <laughs> So it's one of those, one of those tricky ones. It looks really nice, but can I control it? All right, some more Lenten rose. Here's another, another sweet little epimedium. Tiny purple flowers. Columbine. And throughout my shade garden are violets, which I deal with in almost every garden. I do dig a lot of them out. I have uh, thousands of violets. Here's my favorite plant. Probably in the whole garden. It's a double bloodroot. Excuse me, double trillium. Not double bloodroot, double trillium. The flowers are just so pretty. Very gardenia-like. It's a pretty hard plant to find. If you find it for a halfway decent price, I would advise scooping it up if you want one of those really special shade plants. I um, paid a fortune for this, what I would spend on a tree, and it was two stems. But it's really multiplied. Many more places offer them, but they were all out of stock. And they were about half the price of what I had paid for mine. So maybe they're, they're becoming a little more common, which would be great, because they are beautiful. There's an epimedium behind it, so you can see how the epimedium really fill in. And then a bunch of hostas. And some more epimedium behind that. Here's some more of the color flashes still be. another bleeding heart. It's the yellow with the white flowers. It was growing over in our little woodland area and it's it's been in for I don't know three or four years and wasn't doing much so I thought I would rescue it. Throw it in this shade garden. There's another Lenten rose back here. Just like having all of the textures of all the different plants. I've never really figured out how many different varieties of plants I have in the shade garden, but I think it just helps make it so interesting when you have all of the different textures. You know, here we have iris at the edge of the border, columbine, Jeffersonia, Lenten rose, just a whole bunch of different different bits of plants and all of those textures and shapes and colors just make it much more interesting and alas if anyone saw the shade garden video from last year our crab apple tree did in fact bite the dust <laughs> we're leaving it though because the birds love it. They land on it all the time. They store seeds in it. I'll try and get in here. Forgive me if I'm a little shaky. I'm trying to walk without stepping on any of the shade plants. But I'm going to come in here and show you what they've done. These birds. The woodpeckers. The chipmunks. They all come in here, so I can't tell. I'm too short to see what, what I'm showing you right now, but you get the idea that they've devoured this tree. They really abused it. So we're going to keep it because it is a good landing platform for all of them, but we'll have to figure out how we're going to trim it a little bit so it looks a little neater and then if anyone's got any ideas I was thinking maybe some modern art maybe we paint the trunk or something make it decorative I don't know <laughs> any ideas are welcome
So that's just a sampling of a bunch of different shade plants that are out there. I'm sure I missed some as I went through that you might have caught and said, hey, what was that? Um, but again, I just love planting a great variety. And there's always something going on, whether it's you know, foliage, flowers. I'm pretty keen on foliage because, you know, in a full shade garden, you get the flowers for a while. But then, you know, you want to have the mix of foliage. Hope it gives you some ideas.